Matisse is renowned for his portraits characterized by expressive planes that reflect the emotional states of his subjects. However, this particular piece deviates from that trend. Within the context of a dual portrait featuring his patrons, Michael and Sarah Stein, Matisse presents Mrs. Stein with a lack of dimensionality, portraying her facial features in an overly simplified manner and depicting her neck seemingly caught amidst colossal scissor blades. The vibrant palette typically associated with Matisse is notably absent, with only subtle light patches adorning Stein's face. It's worth noting that even Matisse's preliminary study of Stein exhibits a superior quality compared to the final portrait. If it's not already evident, Munch harbored no affection for this particular dog. Despite being an animal enthusiast, the canine, belonging to his neighbor, appeared to be an unruly creature that failed to win Munch's favor. Recounting instances of nocturnal attacks near his own residence, Munch expressed his disdain, providing some context for this hastily crafted artwork that exudes an unsettling aura. In this portrayal, the titular dog appears less irate and more like an ominous guide, poised to escort you to the underworld. Certainly, Chagall's artistic inclination typically leans towards the whimsical and symbolic. However, this vivid piece, intended as a study for his tribute to poet Guillaume Apollinaire, might be better kept out of the limelight. Though intended to portray the fused forms of Adam and Eve, it instead presents perplexing proportions and a flamboyantly chaotic backdrop. In fairness, it's essential to recognize that this is a study, serving as a precursor to a remarkable avant-garde canvas, so we'll be lenient in our critique. Apologies for the newsflash, but Van Gogh, too, had his share of artistic missteps. However, the spotlight falls on his portrayal of a youth from Auvers sur Oise. While the artist aimed to immortalize the subject's sun-kissed complexion and radiant smile, the journey say quoi of the eternal, in Van Gogh's words, what materialized was a figure with green eyes, spotty cheeks, and pointy ears. The awkward image features discolored lips gripping a cornflower stem. The journey say quoi here remains quite elusive, indeed. When Rembrandt was 18, he crafted a series of paintings, each serving as an allegory for one of the five senses. As expected from a young but undoubtedly talented artist, these pieces don't attain the realism and mastery of tenebrism evident in Rembrandt's later works. While smell and hearing can be pardoned for their shortcomings, touch, portraying a man undergoing a quack operation, takes a decidedly cartoonish turn. From the doctor's three-fingered hand to the onlooker's pinhole eye, the scene appears more like a caricature than a serious depiction. Undoubtedly intended to be humorous, it seems the joke here might be a bit too exaggerated. Setting aside the glaringly imbalanced power dynamics inherent in an adult man having a child pose nude for him, this early Picasso canvas, all things considered, falls short of his finest work. While the face of the singularly named Linda is etched with a certain evocative world weariness, the overall portrayal is somewhat awkward. The girl is rendered with a lack of finesse, prompting Gertrude Stein, the painting's former owner, to lament that Linda appeared to have feet like a monkey. However, despite the awkward circumstances and artistic shortcomings, this controversial piece proved its market value, fetching a staggering $115 million at Christie's in 2018. A plethora of memes humorously scrutinize the depiction of less-than-adorable Renaissance babies. Perhaps, one could speculate, the male Renaissance artists had limited exposure to infants, a realm traditionally associated with women's responsibilities. Frequently, we encounter bizarre scenarios where gruesome male heads are seamlessly attached to contorted, muscular baby bodies, an unsettling spectacle for our modern sensibilities. Adding to the peculiar nature, these renditions often carry a certain sexual charge, frequently featuring babies seemingly feasting on a breast. The Italian painting depicted above stands as a quintessential example, portraying peculiar babies encircling a stressed and overwhelmed Madonna. 
It's reminiscent of the chaos one might feel during school summer holidays. Take a moment to observe those perplexing faces, and ponder the unexpected prevalence of lipstick in this peculiar artistic universe.